What's up, Kyle Kane? Welcome back to some statics. So we got this problem here. Uh, we got these two springs suspending this weight, and our goal is to find the uh, like the unstretched uh, length of each spring after we remove the weight. So it might be kind of a confusing problem. You're like, where do I want to approach this from? But uh, here's how I'm rationaling it. Um, so we have this equation. Force is equal to the k times does l. So k is the spring coefficient, and it's given to us for these two springs. And delta L is the change in length. So delta L is final length minus initial length. So basically what we're given here is final length. And what we want to find is initial length, right? Well, uh, if we want to find initial length, we're going to go through this formula. But we're going to need another thing, right? We have two unknowns, final length, or initial length and force. So our first step should be to find the force in each one of these. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so first of all, there's a couple other things. We might want to find uh, the lengths and the angles of these springs. So let's first look at this first triangle here. Uh, we want to find basically this theta and the length of it, right? We need to find those two things. So let's label this theta 1 and this is theta 2. So let's say first length AB. Well, that's going to be A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So we can find that with 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.4 squared, right? And that's just because those are the two lengths of that triangle. All right, just have this with me. Uh, so this is going to give you that length, AB, is equal to 0 0.640 meters. And if you want to find theta 1, we're going to use inverse tangent, right? So we can do inverse tangent. And if you're doing tangent, it's opposite over adjacent. So here we're looking at opposite, which is 0 0.4 meters, over adjacent, which is the same here, 0 0.5 meters. So we're going to do 0 0.4 over 0 0.5. We're going to find that theta 1 is equal to 38.7 degrees. We can do the same thing for length uh, AC. So length AC is equal to, well, it's 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. So 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.6 squared. And you're going to get that length AC is equal to 0 0.781 meters. Theta 2, again, inverse tangent. Uh, opposite over or opposite over adjacent. So here's opposite 0 0.6 over adjacent 0 0.5. So 0 0.6 over 0 0.5. And we're going to find that theta 2 is equal to 50.2 degrees. Cool. So those are some pieces of information that we need for the problem. What else do we need? Well, we need to find the weight. Uh, we're given mass, not weight. So a common mistake, or in kilograms, we need this to be in newtons. So we know that force is equal to mass times the gravitational constant. So if we want to find the force, we're going to do mass 30 kilograms times the gravitational constant, which is 9.81 when we're in kilograms. Do this, you get that force is equal to 294 newtons. Well, so now we have all the prerequisite information we need to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and draw our force body diagram. So we're going to draw it at A because this is where all the forces converge, right? We wouldn't want it at C because there's not really any information we get from that. So here is our weight, which we found to be 294 newtons, right? And just because it's on the hook there, that's going to be pulling us down, 294. Then we have this tension AB, or force AB. We found that this theta is 38.7 degrees, in that this force, or I guess this length, uh, is something that's not important to us in this free body diagram. We don't look at lengths and stuff. So then this one is going this way. It's at a little bit more of an angle. This is 50.2 degrees, and we found that. So let's say with this tension AC, and this is tension AB. Now we can go ahead and solve this problem, now that we have this free body diagram to work with. So let's go ahead and get into it. So when we have the free body diagram, we'll do two equations. If we're in two dimensions, that's going to be some of the forces in the x is equal to zero, and some of the forces in the y is equal to zero. Right? We're in equilibrium, so this is how we're going to find our forces. So let's look at this. Uh, in the x direction, we have negative tension AC. And because it's in the x direction, we need to attach a sine or a cosine to it. So let's look. We're looking at the x direction, which is going to be this part of the triangle up here. 
And if we're looking at it, it's, a, it's a opposite from this angle that we know. So if it's opposite from the angle, we're going to use sine. So we're going to hatch a sine of 50.2 degrees. And that's what our tension AC is. So now we can do tension AB, so plus tension AB. And we're going to attach a sine because it's also at that angle there, so it's opposite. So it's sine 38.7 degrees which is equal to zero. So this is our first equation, right? It's one equation, but we have two unknowns, and tension AC and tension AB, so we can't solve for anything here yet. Um, so what next are we going to do? Well, let's do our second equation. Some of the forces in the Y is equal to zero. So this is going to be our second equation in the system of equations. So this time, tension AC is going up in the Y direction, so we're going to add tension AC. And this time, we're looking for this component, which is the Y component of this triangle. And because that's adjacent to the angle, we're going to do adjacent, which is cosine. This is cosine of 50.2 degrees. We're going to add that to tension AB, cosine of 38.7 degrees. And then we're going to subtract that weight, which is 294 newtons. Set that equal to zero. So what do we got here? Well, we have a system of equations, right? We have two equations and two unknowns, tension AC, tension AB, tension AC, tension AB. So when we have two equations, two unknowns, we can solve for them. And how are we going to do that? Well, how I like to do it is I like to solve for one of them first, find out what it's equal to in terms of the other, and then plug it into the other equation. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. Let's start by looking at number one. Let's go ahead and move one of these to the other side. So we get tension AC sine of 50.2 is equal to tension AB sine of 38.7. Right, so all I did here is I moved the tension AC sine of 50.2 50 and I added it to the other side. Now let's go ahead and let's find what tension AC is equal to by subtracting or by dividing by that sign. So it's going to be equal to tension AB, and we're going to be left with the fraction. So this is going to be the sine of 38.7 divided by the sine of 50.2. Right, and this is basically, this would be the same thing as tension AC is equal to tension AB. If you solve this fraction, you get 0.814. All right, so this is the same equation here and there. Now what we can do is, because we have tension AC here, we can plug this AC into this AC. And what's going to happen is we're going to lose the AC, and we'll only have one unknown left. So let's do that. So we're plugging in. Whenever we see a tension AC in this equation, we're going to plug in tension AB, 0.814. So we're going to do tension AB, 0.814. But then we need to attach that cosine of 50.2. So all I did is I changed that tension AC for tension AB is 0.814. Then we can add the second part of the, or the rest of this equation. Tension AB, cosine of 38.7. And then I'm going to move the 294 to the other side. It's equal to 294. Cool, so now we have one equation and one unknown, right? Tension AB is here. There's no other, other unknowns. So we can go ahead and solve for that. So I'll save you guys the math part of this. This is just something you would kind of plug into your calculator, I guess. Uh, but this is going to give you that tension AB is equal to, uh, I did this right. Yeah, it's 226 newtons. Cool, right? Uh-huh. So that's just what happens if you solve this equation. It's pretty simple, right? You multiply these, you multiply that, you add them to each other, and then you divide. Uh, Cool. So then all we need to do is we need to go back to this equation that we wrote earlier to find tension AC. So it's going to say that tension AC is equal to tension AB times 0 0.814. But we know what tension AB is. We just found it. So we can go ahead, erase that, and plug in 226 here to get that tension AC. That's equal to 184. Right. So we found our two forces, right, our two tensions, um, through this free body diagram. So we can go ahead and get rid of uh, this work because we've done it. I'm just going to erase it so I have a little more space to work with. So let's say you do the system of equations. If you have any, if you need help with that system of equations stuff, 
I have a lot of it on my channel, so check out some more Stacks videos. So now we're gonna finally find the, the original length, right now we have a force. So what we can say is that force is equal to k times delta l, but delta l is l final minus l naught. So we're looking for this equation, this l naught here. So by rearranging the equation, you can get that l naught is equal to l final minus force over k. That's just by dividing by the k and then subtracting by the l. That's how you get this equation. So this is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and do it. So let's do L naught for AB first, right? So length final for AB, we found that earlier up here is 0 0.640 meters. And then we're gonna subtract the force in AB, which is 226 newtons. Divide that by the coefficient, uh, the spring coefficient for AB, which is 1.2 kilonewtons per meter. So because it's in kilonewtons per meter, we need to convert that to newtons per meter. We're gonna multiply that by 1,000 to get 1,200, right? Make sure, you, make sure to, your units are similar, right? So then if you solve this, you get length initial AB is equal to 0 0.452 meters. Right, there we go. So now then we're gonna do this for AC, same exact thing, so length not AC is equal to uh, 0 0.781, that's its initial length in that part. Then we're gonna subtract its force, which is 184 newtons, by its coefficient, or its frame coefficient, which is 1,500 newtons per meter. You do this, you get length not AC is equal to 0 0.658 meters. So both of these are a little smaller, which makes sense because they're shrinking uh, when you let the weight off of them. So that's how you solve this problem. They're the answers. Um, yeah, these spring columns sometimes can get a little long, but they're really up harder than any other problem. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you need any more help, again, I have a statics playlist with more columns from the same textbook. And I really appreciate you guys' support. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace.